Hello, this is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry of Chula Longhorn University in Bangkok, Thailand. I'm here in another video tutorial talking about the contents of Chapter 3 of the book Chemistry, co-authored by Chong and Goldsby. Last video introduced the idea of Avogadro's number and the mole when we're quantifying substances. This video we're going to carry on talking about atomic mass units, molar mass, and molecular mass. Now that we know how to quantify substances according to the mole, let's look at one mole of a few common substances. For example, here's a picture that has four substances. We've got some oxygen, one mole of it. Okay. We've got some water, one mole of it. We've got some copper, one mole of copper. And we've got some calcium carbonate, one mole of it. So in each of these samples, there's one mole, which means you know that there's Avogadro's number of the component or constituent particles, molecules, molecules or atoms or repeating ionic units. In each case, we have Avogadro's number of those repeated units. But as you can see, there's also masses now are associated with these molar quantities. One mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams. One mole of water has a mass of 18.0 grams. You see here, interchangeably, interchangeably using weight and mass, which isn't really the best idea. As a scientist, I wish I could be more perfect and always say mass when I mean mass, not say weight when I mean mass and vice versa. So really I should say one mole of oxygen has a mass of 32 grams. One mole of water has a mass of 18.02 grams. One mole of copper has a mass of 63.55 grams. And one mole of calcium carbonate has a mass of 100.09 grams. So each of these substances has a characteristic molar mass. Mass, that being the mass of one mole of the material. We know what grams are. We also need to connect grams to another mass unit called the AMU, or the atomic mass unit, because now we're talking about the mass of a mole. But we know that a mole is made up of a certain number of individual particles, and we sometimes talk about the mass of them. So at the microscopic level, when we're talking about the masses of individual atoms or molecules or repeating ionic units, we will use the units of atomic mass units. How do we connect mass units? two grams. Well, to get an atomic mass unit, we just take a gram, one gram, and divide it Avogadro's number of times. The term atomic mass means the mass of an atom. In units, of course, now we know, of AMU will be used. And how is this whole scale set up? We take one atom of the isotope of carbon, carbon-12, and we say that that will have a mass of 12 AMU. So an AMU is 1 12th of the mass of an isotope carbon 12, that type of carbon atom. By comparison, when we do experiments, say, with mass spectrometers, and we measure the masses of all the different elements, then we've calibrated our instruments so that 1 AMU will be 1 12th of the mass of one of these atoms of carbon-12. And then, as it turns out, the mass of an uh, atom of hydrogen, isotope 1, will have a mass of 1.008 AMU. And a mass of an atom of oxygen, isotope with mass, unit, mass number 16, will be 16 AMU. But the AMU scale is kind of theoretically defined in terms of the mass of atoms of carbon-12, then practically used to figure out the masses of everything else, all these other atoms and molecules, by comparison to the mass of carbon-12. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so now the concept of molar mass. We've already kind of defined that. but Avogadro's number is just a number, and that number can be applied to any kind of objects to get a mole of those objects. 
And so Avogadro's number can be applied when we quantify any objects, eggs, juice, marbles, or atoms, more appropriately. And molar mass is just the mass of that quantity. So if we have one mole of any of these objects, which corresponds to Avogadro's numbers of those objects, that will correspond to a certain mass, which we will call the molar mass. And so the way that AMU has been defined, we know that one mole of carbon-12 atoms corresponds to Avogadro's number of those atoms. That corresponds to 12 grams. But interestingly, we've seen that to say that 12 grams, that's numerically equal to the mass of one of those atoms in AMU. So the scale of AMU is set up relative to the scale of mass in grams in a very convenient way. The mass of one particle in AMU is equal to the mass in grams of a whole mole or Avogadro's number of particles. And so, but whether we're talking about the masses of individual particles or the masses of molar quantities of those repeating units, and whether we're using the units of mass, AMU, or grams, the mass of one of those particles in AMU will be numerically equal to the mass of a mole of those particles in grams. Let's say a little bit more about molecular mass. And it is the sum of atomic masses in a molecule. Basically, the underlying principle is that mass adds up. So imagine we have a molecule of SO2, sulfur dioxide. So the molecule is made up of one atom of sulfur, two atoms of oxygen. So the mass of the entire molecule will be the sum of the masses of the individual atoms. Simple concept, of course. You know that mass adds up. Okay. So the mass of this SO2 molecule will be the sum of those masses. Obviously, we have to account for the fact that we have two oxygens in there, so two times the atomic mass, 16. And so the total molecular mass is 64.07. So we know that one molecule of SO2 has that mass in AMU. But if we take Avogadro's number of them and have a mole of that stuff, a mole of SO2, that will have some mass in grams. And actually, numerically equal, 64.07, numerically equal to the mass in AMU. Convenient, isn't it? Thank you for watching this video. We have covered atomic mass units, how those are derived from grams, and how Avogadro's number factors into there. Discuss molar mass the mass of quantities of materials that have molar quantities of particles in them, molecular mass at the microscopic level. And so in the next video, and what is the next video going to be about? Well, now that we've talked all about quantifying matter by these various ways, we can now explore how there's interconversions possible. When we talk about the amount of matter, we can interconvert between mass, moles, and number of particles.